Hey guys, today I want to show you behind the scenes how I shoot cinematic GoPro B-roll. I will use a GoPro Hero 9 today and definitely wait for the last two tips if you want to know an easy way on how you can always make sure you get smooth looking in camera transitions and also if you want to know how to get nice B-roll shots of yourself. And before we even start shooting actual b-roll I want to give you a quick tip here which is to always keep the horizon and straight lines in the middle if you shoot in white or ultra wide on GoPro cameras because GoPros have a wide angle lens and wide angle lenses always mean that the horizon and straight line bend at the edges of the frame so by keeping it in the center you don't see that bending anymore. I can show you that here quickly so if you get a quick shot here how I tilt up you can see when now the horizon and the airplane is in the top of the frame, it looks a bit banded, but when I put that into the middle of the frame, then it's not banded anymore. And then when I go a bit lower, you can see now the horizon and the airplane feels banded again. So let's say I want to get a shot where I tilt the camera up like that, then I will either shoot that in linear mode to avoid that, or I would simply add a distortion correction in post. You can do that, for example, in Final Cut Pro 10. There is a plugin from Alex for D, for D that does that for you. But if you really need that wide angle look, then definitely make sure that you don't do such moves because they always will come out bad. So let's talk about camera motion. So what I do when I want to move my camera, I usually put something in the foreground like I will do with the grass here now because by putting something right in front of the camera, you can see the camera motion. Now let's do a little example here. If I have the airplane now here and I will only film the airplane, you can barely see any camera motion, right? But if I now put the grass here in the foreground, then you can directly see a lot more motion because the closer objects are to your camera the more the motion becomes visible and especially with that wide angle look from the GoPro that becomes really nice. And now that we're here let me also show you how I do slide shots. Like usually with a GoPro it's actually very easy. I don't use any gimbals or tripods or anything like that. I usually really just st either sit here or stand somewhere and I really just move my hands like that. What I also do to keep the airplane in the center of the frame is instead of just making a sliding shot in like one direction I also slightly slightly pan the camera while I'm moving like I'm moving I'm sliding the camera to the left but at the same time I also pan the camera to the right so instead of making a slight movement like that I also pan the camera slightly so that the airplane always stays perfectly in the center of the frame. Let's do that once again here. So you can see it always stays perfectly in the center and it's actually very easy to do with the GoPro straight out of your hand because the stabilization is so good. And now I change the lens in the GoPro from linear to wide. Like linear is usually a bit better when you do sliding and panning shots like I just did. But wide is great if you want to move the camera forward or backward. So say for example if I would now put the GoPro here and I want to make a backward sliding shot. Then you can see really nice motion because like this grass here, especially the two higher ones here, they come in the frame from the back and that always looks pretty good. And actually wide angle is nice for that because in wide angle you can see more movement happening. Let's say you have a camera with interchangeable lenses and you use a zoom lens there, maybe at 70 millimeter, 100 millimeter, something like that, and you try the same move, you will barely see any movement. But if you use a wide angle camera like the GoPro, then you can see that really good. And there is actually a huge mistake that I oftentimes see beginners making when it comes to camera movement and I actually see that on some GoPro channels sometimes that they that they um, tell you to do so and what I mean here is that some people like, move their cameras forwards and then suddenly they move it to the side and 
try to make a transition with that or uh, so and it really doesn't look cinematic at all because cinematic doesn't mean only that you have camera movement in your shots it also means that your camera movement is kind of predictable and it looks smooth but when you suddenly change the direction of your motion then it usually looks pretty weird as at least as long as there's no actual reason to suddenly change the motion let's say you would film a short film and you have maybe two people and you just quickly want to change the camera from one person to the other then it can be okay to like move the camera forward first and then move it to the side or so but generally especially if you shoot travel videos or so and there's no actual reason why you would do that then that's not cinematic at all and you should avoid doing that so always when you do camera motion try to move your camera only in one direction and don't do sudden movement now of course it's easy to criticize but hard to actually make it right by yourself so let me also show you how you can actually make a kind of sudden camera move but in a good way so it would fit for travel videos and here's actually one I will first walk through that pipe there and then I will shift the GoPro to the left to get the attention to the app and in that case it's actually good to change the camera motion while you're recording so let me get this shot I actually did a mistake. I did not lock the exposure before. So inside the pipe, it actually overexposed the image. That didn't look good at all. So now we'll do it again. I just locked the exposure on the airplane there. You can also see the sun a bit in the background. So that looks nice. So let's get the shot again now in a better way. So you can definitely tell now that looks a bit better and you can also see I did not use a gimbal or anything like that. I really just made this duck walk like really small steps and walking smoothly to don't get too much motion there because usually you get a bit motion in the horizontal X and the footage probably doesn't look perfectly stable so I will likely stabilize that a little bit more in post like usually in your video editor you have some sort of post stabilization so definitely use that as well and then you get really nice and smooth looking footage and as you can see now I first moved forward but then just right before I left the pipe I also moved the camera a bit to the left and up to reveal the airplane and as you can tell it looks pretty good and also you can combine that for example with a speed ramp you can like make the walk through the pipe a little bit faster in post and then slow it down when the airplane reveals and that usually looks pretty cool and by the way let me know in the comments below what you're struggling with when it comes to shooting cinematic gopro videos so i can come up with more tutorials in the future and before i tell you how to always make sure that you have nice in-camera transitions available in your edit later when you edit your gopro footage let me also talk about my cinematic gopro masterclass we already have more than 80 members in there and in this masterclass I teach you everything you need to know to create cinematic GoPro videos quickly. In this masterclass I teach you everything from the gear you should have over the settings, how you shoot cinematic videos, how you edit them, how you color grade them. So everything you need to know really and you find a link to that masterclass in the description below so check it out and let me show you how you can always make sure that you get smooth in camera transitions which is actually very easy. So let's say I have a sliding shot for example like we did before like you know like little slide and a small pan in there and what I usually do then at the beginning and at the end is that I simply add a bit more camera motion it can be very quick it can also be slow like if you do it quick you can easily create whip transitions and if you do it a bit slower you can do speed ramp transitions so let me show you what I mean so let's say I want to get the sliding shot here of the airplane then I would first point the GoPro to the right I would slide it in then I get my slide shot and then I would slide it out here. And now because I have camera motion at the beginning and at the end of the shot, I can easily use that to transition into the next shot. So now I got a shot of the airplane there using this method. Let me now get a shot here of the camera to quickly show you what I mean. 
And there you can see now I can slightly speed up the first shot here of the airplane at the end of the clip and then I can speed up the beginning of the second clip in post and there I have a smooth transition. So by simply adding a bit more camera motion at the beginning and at the end of every clip you can easily make sure that you always have these smooth transitions available in post. You can always speed it either a bit up or if you already moved your camera pretty quick you only have to make a cut at the right timing and bam you have the transition. It's so easy. Okay, let's come to the last tip and that is that you should use foreground objects when you get shots of yourself as well because foreground objects always make your shots a bit more interesting to watch and this is actually a very good example here. So now you see that pipe and I will now walk behind that pipe so the GoPro films me through the pipe and you can just see me there at the end. So all the attention of the viewer is on me because I'm in the center of the circle there. What I also did here now, I locked the exposure so you can simply press and hold in the middle of the screen, screen in that case here. So then it shows you this spot metering icon and then you press once again to lock exposure and you press the check mark icon and then the exposure stays exactly the same and doesn't change and also because I did that I now exposed for the air, airplane there so for the bright parts of the image so otherwise this the airplane there and also me would be overexposed so that looks bad so in that case just pressing in the middle there where I will stand later and lock the exposure there did the job so let's get the shot here And that's actually great now because this shot is perfect to combine with the shot we did earlier where I walked with the GoPro through the pipe because now I can first show this shot here where, so, where the viewer sees how I walk through the pipe and later he sees what I saw like the move through the pipe. So also think about that like how can you get shots that later create sequences in your final travel video. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If yes, then leave me a thumbs up. And also if you're interested in general filmmaking tutorials, I do that here on a weekly basis on this channel. So if that sounds interesting, definitely hit the subscribe and the bell notifications button and see you in the next video. Yeah, finished the video. Now it's time to fly drones. I just got the new GJI FPV drone. It will be a lot of fun. You will also see videos about that on this channel.